Welcome to round two of the Harness Racing New Zealand forums here at the Harness Racing headquarters. Today you're going to hear from a number of participants across the four spheres of uh, the last forums, the owners, the breeders, the trainers and drivers, and of course the clubs. Initially, you'll hear from Gary Woodham, the CEO, and of course Catherine McDonald, who's pulled all this together, find out what their expectations were from this week, and at the back end of it, how did it all go? Catherine, second round of forums, what were you looking to achieve this week? Really I'm like looking to achieve some good feedback because we asked people to give us their feedback, we gave them a couple of weeks to do so, we were a little bit disappointed about how much came back um, and around any new ideas so we're really wanting to use these sessions to extract the feedback while we're in the session. Catherine, a lot of the discussion last time was around the open class paces and trotters and where we place these races, it's been quite polarising. Uh, very polarising and I think one of the key issues is people understanding the number of horses we have in that grade. Uh, there are not that many, so for example currently we've only got four in Southland and uh, ten in the North Island and ten here, so we don't, it's, it's a really small pool. So uh, we thought we'd throw the grenade out there and see what people thought and certainly have got some feedback on that one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the other major discussion point today was around where the majority of our horses are, the rating 40 to 60 horses and some new concepts that I think had a lot of merit. Yeah, it has a lot of merit and uh, they're the bottom of the triangle so to speak but the majority of people there are there and the majority of horses are there and it's a really nice scheme, ideas and bonuses for those types of horses and uh, we're really excited about the idea around it and we're really hoping we get some traction with it going forward. Yeah, it wasn't just about the owners of those horses, there were clearly some discussion around breeding bonuses as well, which as we know, we need to lift the number of horses that are being bred. Absolutely, and what you've got at the moment is the breeding numbers are going down, so we're looking for something to turn that round. And uh, if we can install a breeder's bonus that will attract more breeders, that will really make a difference. The clubs have been well represented, as they should be through these forums. It appears to me that, not, not that they weren't in harmony before, but they, they seem to be singing off the same hymn sheet now. They are. Today was a lot better. Um, we had the clubs in today and uh, they are trying to work together and work along with Harness Racing New Zealand. I think they see the bigger picture and uh, they're looking at how we can make the most of the day's types of racing we have and see how we can grow what we want to do. We have to maintain our market share and the only way that that can happen is if they do work together. Absolutely and the market share is the key because without the market share we don't get our funding and then without funding we don't get our stakes and therefore our horses go. So it's, it's a vicious circle but uh, we have to try and work together to make this happen and see what exciting changes we can put out there to, to grow the sport. Okay, after round one of the forums you suggested we were 10% of the way along the journey at the end of this week. What percentage point would you put on it? Um, I'm hoping 50 by the end of the week, once we get the feedback. Uh, you know, you can take it that you haven't got the feedback, therefore everything you've put up there is okay. There's probably two or three key points, like the, the open class pacing is, is a challenge. But, you know, by the end of the week we may come out with what that might look like, and that's the hope. A lot of the discussion over the two forums thus far have been around our top class horses in both gates, but there was some interesting discussion around our rating 40 to 60 horses today in particular, uh, given that they supply the majority of the races. Yes, yeah, 66% of our, our product is in that grade level, and um, we, we have been concentrating on the top class, the two-year-olds and three-year-olds, and the trotters, and today was about the next level, and what do we do and how do we keep them here. A lot of people are selling these horses because there's not enough money around. So we're looking at how we bolster that and keep them here in New Zealand and give them something to aspire to. And um, I've got a couple of those horses, so I was pretty excited to, to see that the team have come up with a good concept. And uh, let's put it through the mill. We've got another four of these sessions to go. Let's see if everyone else thinks it's as good as what the clubs did today. Yeah, and look, the stimulation of the breeding industry, that was again to the fore today, which is imperative to our future. Yeah, Greg, I guess I talked to you earlier on about the, uh, my ear being sore of a, when I got into here after a couple of months of um, people wanting to know and let me know what needs to be done. Breeding was very high on that. We've lost a lot of people as hobbyists and a lot of people have, you know, 
selling mares at the moment. And so we have to stimulate that some way. Now we've done it before with um, breeders' bonuses and it's worked. Um, someone invented a wheel once and it's around and it keeps on going around. So we'll bring back the breeder, breeder bonuses and see if we can uh, stimulate the business again. What were you looking to achieve in your own mind out of this week? Look, I want uh, the pendulum needs to swing. I was a little bit disappointed. Um, we were, I said we were at 10% before. I think some of our participants thought we were at 99% because we didn't get enough feedback uh, on change. We got a lot of feedback, but not a lot on why we would change it and do it different than what the architect said. And I can't believe they got it right first time, and I don't believe they got it right first time. So I want to I want to move that pendulum up. I want to be over 50% by the time this week uh, finishes so that we can then start actually getting down to really nitty-gritty day-by-day negotiation of what goes on at what race meeting at what day. Because that window is narrowing, you, you do need to have this ready to go by October as you put it out. Yeah, and I want to do it a week earlier, as I've told you. So it, it is narrowing, but we'll get there. Nathan, your first appearance at the forums, what was your take on that? No, pretty interesting, Greg, great discussions and um, no, really, um, really interesting and um, no, I thought it was um, really good. Does it now give you a better understanding of just how the industry works? Oh, it definitely does, obviously being involved with the, um, the South and committees and, 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 and things I do down there on the programming committee as well. Um, had a basic understanding but it's a real insight and it's, um, you know, obviously there's so many decisions go on to make all these, you know, obviously big, big key decisions but there's a lot of little decisions that lead up to them and um, really interesting and I really enjoyed it, yeah. The open class discussion was clearly polarising through the first round of forums, but there seems to be a bit of softening around that, which had to happen. Yeah, I think so. I think everyone realises the problems that um, are in place with open class horses, and you know we need to utilise the pool of horses that we've got. So um, just how we do that and how it's um, you know being structured is very important. So um, no, it's very interesting, and I think um, you know obviously we're on the right track. One of the major discussion points was around where we get our racehorses from, the rating 40 to 60 band, where there's close to 70% of our racehorses are in that band. Um, there has to be something done for them, and it looks like there is. Yeah, very positive news for that um, lower rating band as far as um, some of the concepts going forward, and I think that'll be well received right, right through the industry. So, um, no, look... Great meeting really and um, a lot of positive stuff so um, no, um, looking forward to the next, um, you know, next meeting and um, you know, hopefully a lot of upcoming changes. First appearance at the forums, uh, what did you make of that? Look it was good to be here Greg because obviously not being here last time and of course not really knowing what they put up on the whiteboards beforehand, I think you know the first one that I missed everybody sort of didn't get a chance to look at it so it was hard to take a presentation in over a three hour period and have a really you know an opinion so it was i knew a little bit about it but not a lot uh, good discussions and um i think a long way to go yet plenty of discussion around open class pacing and trotting and placement of races so there's a bit to be thought about there yeah there is look the open class paces it's always been tricky and we all know they're getting less and less in new zealand and uh, it's been for a long time now. It's not just something that's happened overnight, you know. It's been 20 years. I've seen five and six horse races 20 years ago in Auckland, you know, when Barry and Mark were training, uh, Roy were training together. It's not an easy fix, this one. It, look, some of those ideas are really good to have more horses in a race and obviously will increase the turnover. My worry would be that um, just trying to have them in a certain area for a period of time and then transferring, say, south for five months and then the north for a period. Very tough on a lot of trainers, especially young ones. All right for me, I got a, you know I got two setups. All right for Steve Stockman shortly, he's going to have two, and Telf are going to have two setups. And for the, the you know the Cullens and the Mark Perns of this world, okay for them too. But very hard, and, and um, I, I'm not sure if it's going to work just yet, but it's got potential. Robert, you got the best trotter in the country. There was a big discussion about the placement of the Dominion. Where would you have it? Yeah, I'd have it on show day, and I know Johnny and Colin here are, are against that, but my reasoning is that the New Zealand Cup is like the Melbourne Cup, the Cox Plate, you know, any big race, uh, the Caulfield Cup, it sells itself, the day sells itself, and you don't have to put another big race on that day. If they take it away from show day, I just feel as though that it'll lose, it won't lose any of its prestige because it'll still be the Dominion Handicap. But that is show day. Now, show day's been a worry for years, Greg. When I was on the New Zealand Metro and we lost the show, I remember saying to the late Barry Cotton, we're going to have a problem here, and he disagreed at the time. And I said, once we lose that show, you know, the crowds are going to stop coming. 
We've got to do more on show day to try and get them back. And um, I think if we lose the Dominion at the moment, it's the wrong thing to do. Wasn't the only discussion point at the top end. We did have uh, a concept put to us around rating 40 to 60 horses, which impressed quite a few. Yeah, impressed me too. It was great. I thought it was a good idea and it's, it's got really good merit. Um, the breeders' bonuses are really good. You know, when Master won over a million dollars as a two-year-old, I think we chuffed out close to 300 grand to the breeders. It was huge. But, you know, you put in the National Bloodstock's idea, of course, to do that. And you went to the sales knowing these big bonuses were going to be about not only for the owner of the horse, but also the breeder. So that's good because, you know, without breeding, we've got nothing. And so good ideas there. I like the bonus for the breeders and uh, a lot of chances to win money and to win some good money too for those sorts of horses. And, you know, like it's a bit like you put a horse in an amateur race, Greg. They get a bit of confidence and they grow a leg. And if these horses will come through the grades pretty well. And I reckon they'll, you'd be surprised one or two nice horses will come out of this. Mark, major discussion around open class for both pacers and trotters. There was a lot of discussion there, wasn't there? Yeah, there was, and I think probably a lot of that came about the people didn't have a full understanding of the whole lot, and the thing, simple thing is we talk about change, and I think the people in the room that have been making the changes have a good understanding of everything, so I think we've got to listen to them more than actually what talking about the horse in our own backyard, and people kind of tend to do that, so these people in the group have done an amazing job, and I think we should really listen to them. Placement of the Dominion. That was a, a decent old chat. Yeah, it flipped me upside down. I was always thought Dominion should go on Cup Day, but um, talking to everybody, or you know, hearing everybody's point, you know, I think we would lose it if it went to Cup Day from Dominion, and you know, we may look at well, there's the option of looking at changing the free for all. So um, it was a great discussion. There's yeah, probably a bit to, bit of work to do on that, but it's probably yeah, for me, it's probably leave the Dominion where it is. What about the placement of the Derby? What, what, what do you sort of see um, the Northern Derby? It's looked like being run in March, April or thereabouts um, and then the New Zealand Derby in December. Are you a fan of that? Yeah, I think I am. Like To be later in the season, I think it works out good and you know, not being the big race in the winter. I think what we've got to get ahead round is the whole concept that our two-year-old year will change as well. So it comes down to us trainers just changing our model of how we train them and getting them later in the races will be later. Like, you know, in 12, 18 months' time when we've got a head round it, we'll just be doing it normal, what we've been done for 20 years. It's just the change is what people are you know, struggling with. So um, I think it all transitions to each other, and I think um, by having their best races at the best time of year, I think it definitely does work. Mark, because of our handicapping model, we know the majority of our horses, well over 60%, are in the 40 to 60 uh, grade. The concept that was put down today, it, it certainly had a bit of merit. Yeah, I think it's a great concept, and it gives those horses something to strive for and that's where the majority of horses are and you know handicapping systems pushing more horses down and less up so um, we're going to be you know all the horses are down low so um, it's a great concept it's good to sell to owners or they'll probably sell it to the trainers they'll keep the horses and the horses that can race week in week out and that's what trainers need to do. Mark you've been heavily involved in the New Zealand bloodstock sales in the last couple of years the harness million concept Karaka million type concept um, seems to be a positive step. Yeah, I think so. They're all behind it and, you know, they're big supporters and it's working the galloping, so, you know, why wouldn't you try it? The, you know, the easy, easy saying is, if you're stupid, you know, if you think you're doing the same thing and, it, you know, you want something different results. So um, I think those things are very positive and I think it'll be a great weekend. And just as a trainer, have your owners there racing for big money and they'll enjoy the night out and then go there and spend money the next day. It does make it an event and that's what the owners, it's about really for them is making an event. First time at the forums, how did you find it? Yeah, no, it was really enjoyable, uh, quite an informative session and yeah, took a few things away from it. Big discussion points around the top end, but Trent, I wanted to talk to you around the 40 to 60 grade where the, I think it was something like 1.6, 1.7 million dollars uh, potentially could be shared around um, and breeders bonuses, that sort of thing, I'm sure that uh, pricked your, your ears up. Yeah, I've always had a bit of a theory where 90% uh, of the horses race for sort of 10% of the stakes. So it was really good to see a, a few initiatives are in that space. Uh, every horse starts in, a, in that rating band, that 40 to 60 bands, and not every horse is uh, able to leave it. So uh, it's great to have something to strive towards to set your horse for, and uh, you know, especially um, it might help uh, a few of those lower end uh, horses that, that might not necessarily um, be real competitive. The Harness Million concept, or the Karaka Million New Zealand Bloodstock concept, again, I, I know you sell your horses prominently down here, but it's got to be a positive for, for the sales and the breeders alike. Yeah, no, it's pretty exciting. I think uh, creating marketable, 
opportunities. So, you know, something where we can have a marquee event alongside the sales. So having the, the Harness Million uh, series just, just before the Auckland sale, I think that's going to be an awesome time. And I think it just gives everyone something it's just a bit more buoyancy and a bit something more to look forward to. Yeah. Placement of a couple of races was a lengthy discussion in there. Do you have an opinion on where the Dominion should be run and or the New Zealand Derby? Yeah, no, uh, the Dominion one I was always very uh, firm on having it on Cup Day. Uh, but after hearing a few of the discussions, I might have changed my mind. I think uh, having the free-for-all as a mobile uh, on Cup Day, I think if we actually remove that altogether, it changes the whole concept of the week. So. Um, I think it's just need, we need to look at it from a point of view of how can we make the most money out of these races and actually having another separate day for the, the pacing free-for-all and the trotting free-for-all, whether it's a week later, giving those horses a little bit more time, can we generate more money by putting those races a week later and whether the Dominion stays on, on show day or, or goes to cup day, but if, if we spread those over three days, can we potentially make more money doing it that way and if we can, then we have to do it. And the New Zealand Derby? Uh, the New Zealand Derby, yeah, I think having a, having a marquee event in that, in that December bracket, I think that's going to be really exciting. I think the weather's good, um, people are in a really good mood because of the time of year, and just having something that people can look forward to towards the end of the year, I think that, that, that I think it's good, yeah. First time at the forums, how did you enjoy that? Oh yeah, no, it was great to have you say and uh, definitely uh, be part of it, it was brilliant. Major discussion around open class trotting and pacing and the placement of races. There's a lot to take in, isn't there, Greg? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it'd be a bit of travelling, obviously, involved, but if it's for the betterment of the game, you've got to do it. Something's been close to your heart is, is what day the Dominion is run on, and, and you've been an advocate for a long time for it to be on, on Cup Day. Has anything swayed your thinking there? Oh, there's a couple of things. I've always thought the Dominion should have been Cup Day. You've um, obviously you got the best opportunity to get the best horses on Cup Day, and I would have thought that was the ideal. But I suppose it can be around the betting dollar, and a couple of points were brought up that you know the the um, show day might fall apart if the Dominion wasn't there. So, yeah, there's for and against. Um, probably having a stand on Cup Day might be a better option and you know where you can you know if you choose to go and stand um, it's easy going in a stand on Dominion Day so yeah there's a bit to think about there. A lot of our horses race in the rating 40 to 60 band and, and you guys race a lot of horses there look to be some wonderful concepts uh, put to you today. Oh yeah definitely more opportunity for them to win uh, bigger uh, stake races than that, that's great you know, most of us race um, in that grade really, majority of them, I was saying today I think there's only 17 cup horses so most of them are in that lower grade so it's great if they can get an opportunity to win decent money and we might be able to retain some of those horses now. And some grass track sort of bonuses too if you like, I think they call them the springtime gems and the country cup sort of gems, um, that would give incentive to the homebush lads of this world that, that may well have been sold otherwise. Oh without a doubt, I mean uh, obviously there's horses for courses and there's a lot of horses that suit the grass and you know the, the, um, we've, we've seemed to have a lot of them ones so yeah no, it'll be a great opportunity for those type of horses to win decent money. Did you like what you, you saw today? Does it excite you with the, the future ahead? Oh, definitely. We had to change because we, we were going no good the way we were going. So, yeah, it's great to think that people were, um, are prepared for the change now and it just has to happen. It's not a, a matter of um, sitting on our hands and doing nothing. First time at the forums, Mark. Um, are you impressed by what they're looking to achieve? Yeah, very impressed, Greg. Uh, it was a lot to take in, but uh, certainly... Um, you know, we need to change and uh, everyone's very passionate and, and a lot of positive uh, discussion came out of today and uh, I think moving moving forward, it, it looks very promising. Mark, plenty of discussion around the open class ranks, both pot, uh, trotters and pacers. Um, what what were your impressions on the placement of some of the races and or the proposal of that, because it's not set in stone? No, no, and it's, as you say, at the stage, it's just proposal, but, uh, you know, it, it looks good. Um, Trainers are going to have to make an adjustment. There'll be, you know, uh, a carnival in the north and then a carnival in the south, which they're proposing. And uh, we haven't got the numbers to run them at both ends at the same time. So I think, um, you know, trainers have got to get their head round it a little bit and, um, and you know, maybe utilise, you know, a trainer in the north and, and vice versa sort of thing. But, uh, yeah, I can see it working. 
In many ways, Mark, we already have many of those carnivals in place anyway, and, and your stable and, and the Dunn stable clearly have the ability to shift large numbers around, but it, it is about evolving and changing, isn't it? It is, Greg, yeah, and, and we need to, and um, it's just a fact of life for, for everyone in the industry to, to accept and, and try and work out what's, what's the best strategy. Cran, first time at the forums, what did you make of that? Well, basically we've started from this flat canvas with the horse's birthday starting January 1, so then it's all started. And the passion from all participants, not from four corners, from 104 corners, has all been thrown on the table the last few weeks, and it's fantastic. We had a major focus around the open class horses and the placement of races. Um, did it enhance what you, you think is possible? I love their enthusiasm. Not a quick fix, but I think in the general... We are glorified pre-trainers to Australia and further afield. There was a big element today around the 40 to 60 grade and, and just how important they are to the overall funding of the code. Um, you'll have some in this grade at some point, so did, did again, did that enhance what you, what you think the future might hold? Oh, it's great. Uh, we, we shoot for the stars and you know fall amongst the bottoms, so uh, we always have them. Don't worry about that. We're all shooting for, for stardom, but uh, I'll have a lot of those horses like everyone else has. So um, for them to be looking at them, and uh, they talk about big figures, and we know it's probably 80 90% of, of our horse pool. So if they can make them more plentiful of, of, of more um, stakes higher, well, let's grab it. Who's not going to? Cran, what you've seen throughout this afternoon, has it encouraged you for the future? Oh, it brings tears to the eyes, the passion of people. Um, everyone was storing up their frustrations, their ideas. You can learn from anyone. You don't have to be a road scholar or work for NASA to put in your 10 cents of views here. And um, I think it's great. They're all coming together. And between Kath and McDonald uh, and, and Gary Woodham, um, they've been the, the brainchild of, of, of opening, or well, starting the fire, I should say, I suppose. And uh, they'll um, bring all this information together. And I'm sure they'll bring out great conclusions. Um, nothing ventured, um, you know, nothing won.